So uh, this here is the implications of that in the city itself. And, and this is a sketch of how we, like you saw in that early drawing, connect this to tall buildings or clusters of tall buildings in the city. Showing this is a vehicle with that same wheel. So there's four of them. You could have three, you can have seven. And you just add volume, add an envelope to the wheel for people, depending on the amount of people in storage, and you have your car. And the, the great thing about it, oh, here's a, uh, we're calling it the Omnibub. This is uh, one of many uh, design iterations that we use. Uh, the fantastic thing is these same wheels can reverse in, in direction and, and move in the Z axes. So they can enter uh, into the building's circulatory core. Uh, here is an, an example of that, just in case you're not imagining it. And here it is fitted into uh, two towers, or later to be a cluster, with the chances between bridging here or the opportunity to put in uh, off-the-shelf wind turbine technology. Um, this is this, the, the metaphor of all of these things becomes a, 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 a city of bits. So all of these parts are meant to be mobile. Skyscrapers are connected via their circulatory links. They're bridged. You have stacks of vehicles here being charged. All the vehicles are autonomous, independent, intelligent, and linked. Fast moving systems happen underground, circulating up through the cores of the buildings, and then each passenger can stick to his building. Now, some of you may have seen this in movies like uh, Minority Report with Tom Cruise. Uh, I think uh, the people in our lab were responsible for some of the ideation on that work uh, with Steven Spielberg. So we were really interested in building it. Okay, so that's, that's the first kind of intro part. Uh, the second part is ecology. And this is about, uh, we're going to change scales here, shift them to that of a house. This is a project I did with uh, Dr. Lara Greeden and Javier Urbano, who's soon to be Dr. Javier. Um, uh, we worked on this project. Uh, thinking about a competition for how we can change uh, uh, the, building, uh, the building profession from a building technology point of view. Meaning that in the life cycle analysis of a building, you have to chop down some trees with power tools, put them on you know, trucks that use gasoline that bring them to a sawmill, that reduce them to elements for construction using more power, then delivered to a site, unpacked again, and uh, you know, used as a, 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 a building envelope for X amount of years before the entire building is taken down and ends up in a landfill. Well, we're thinking, screw that. Let's just grow it on site. Or you know, let's think about how we can make the architecture actually living and fully integrated into the ecology and edible, at least to some life form uh, somewhere in the spectrum. Uh, and it wasn't, uh, you know, the idea w which was at first fantasy is absolutely possible. It's been around for 2,500 years. So uh, we are not the inventors of the living treehouse. Uh, there's many people who are interested in that. However, our contribution to this wall of knowledge, our brick, uh, is uh, placed in the realm of a CNC or rapid prototyping. In other words, control of tree growth. This you can see here is uh, from the tree circus. This is a 15-year growth of a very strong arch for a tree. This is a lattice system, uh, also uh, of a living tree. This is, I think, a, a, a also 10, 15 year, years of growth. Uh, and we have some uh, wonderful Israelis that can get this stuff in three or four months uh, using uh, ficus, which is a, a semi-epiphytic plant that essentially is very soft when it's uh, being grown, especially the root structure. But when you pull it out and expose it to the air, pull the roots out, they want to get hard, right? So what you do is when it's soft, you weave it through a, 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 some CNC system, right? So here we are plotting out the entire geometry to seven decimal places of accuracy, and we weave in our soft pieces of ficus or whatever is locally uh, needed. And uh, you know, here's the, the ficus inside there, for those of you who can see. And then uh, you would have, you'd start growing out your wall. And the wall, right, uh, if you know anything about ficus, right, it's, it doesn't spend all its time uh, making, making a, a trunk, right? It doesn't stand on its own. Most, most of these plants, like lianas, they need to hang on something, right? Uh, they're parasitic. But when you give them a geometry and they get a little bit hard, they're going to they're gonna be stabilized, especially if they're triangulated. You connect them to a larger structure, like a regular tree or, or a tree in an arch, and you've got yourself an envelope. So it's a matter of filling in that envelope. Uh, this is the, uh, the popular science image. God, it's cut. Well, anyway, you can you get the picture. Uh, it's wonderful. Uh, and here's, it, here's a, a section of it growing. Uh, that's a, a, an elevation view of the fab tree hat. And uh, we have a developer uh, near Beverly Hills 
who uh, I was just on home and garden doing this thing, who wants to build one of these things. But the, you can't do it because, well, not because of the technology or the time it takes. It's because, have you ever tried to pass one of these through a planning board? Right? If there's a 40 foot height limit, my tree or the tree house is going to hit 50 feet at some point. Uh, you know, also bondable insur insurance contractors or insurance for details. You can't find a spec writer that's half botanist, half agricultural, arbor smith, farmer, uh, slash, you know, architect that can write these specs, you know, for, uh, to be bondable for an insurance company. So, you know, we, we, we did the 50% version. This is called Matscape. Uh, another project that I worked on with some great folks at MIT. So this is a, essentially a, a quilt fitted into the landscape, the landscape pulled up, with some components that are living, then uh, business as usual construction, and then uh, other elements for energy generation like photovoltaic cells or natural ventilation like ETFE foil pillows, and some other device that I worked on at the Media Lab called these uh, uh, wind quills which uh, generate low voltages for wind. So you get multiple um, layers of energy generation.